Hey folks, DC here from DC's Gadgets. It is the 28th of May, 2020, and the topic I'm going to look at today is uh, screen bottom boards and ventilating beehives. So let's start with screen bottom boards. We, we think that screen bottoms are this new thing that started that was in the last decade. The fact of the matter is screen bottoms started back in about 1860, give or take a little bit. Langstroth pioneered his uh, his box, patented the beehive in like 52, I believe. And within eight or 10 years, someone came up with an idea for a screen bottom board. And the object back then was wax moth control. The screen bottom boards were never meant at any point in time to be used open on the bottom. The purpose of a screen bottom was to have a pan or a board or something below the screen to catch debris and keep the bottom closed so you wouldn't get too much air in the beehive. Now I found my first year I had all screen bottoms and I noticed that in the middle of my second year doing bees that my bees would leave the bottom box and I gave them extra boxes and I'm running all mediums. And notice that in some of the deep boxes in our club yard with screen bottoms, the queens wouldn't lay like the lower half of the bottom frames in the bottom box. So I did some experiments and sort of closing the bottoms up, found out that the bees would lay more down the bottom. So I believe they're getting too much air in the screen. So wide open screen. So we think you know, the, the current use of the screen bottom was for pest control, integrated pest management, they say. And the idea is that small hive beetles or varroa mites can fall through the screen. But I mean, the thought of, a, I've said this before, the thought of a mite or a small hive beetle playing plinko down through a box of bees to get out of the screen and either fall to the ground or fall into a pan where they're captured is pretty out there. And if you check on the research and uh, the testing that was done when they first started doing this, right within the last six, eight years, I think is when it started. The percentage that it helps is like less than 10%. And I think if you're running a screen bottom and it's open, I think you're inviting high beetles to come in. Uh, they've got these neat gadgets you can stick on the front of your boxes. Um, essentially, it's got little holes in it, circles for the bees to come through. And below those circles, there's a ledge cut out where the beetles can't get in. I can't think of what it's called. I see them online all the time. And then, you know, Jason Crispin over in Ohio, JC's Bees, he tried some stuff with blocks of wood and some tubes. Same basic thing, the bees fly into tubes and the blocks are down low, so the beetles are coming in down low. We're actually gonna try some stuff at the next build day. I might make some little blocks with a, with a shelf under it. So if your bees are coming in the front door, these devices can slow them down. And there was a guy out of Australia selling the Beetle Buster thing. And I think on his, you've got your entrance, it's got a slight gap on the bottom where if the beetle comes in the front door, they end up going to the bottom and it goes right into the catch pan underneath. And he's got a, not only a screen bottom, but he's got a bottom that's just got small perforations in it. And under that bottom, you've got a catch pan with diatomaceous earth or mineral oil or vegetable oil or something in the pan to catch the beetles. But the bottom is covered. You're not getting the air in the bottom. So if your small hive beetles can fall through a screen, what's going to stop small hive beetles from flying back up into the screen? So I think if you're running wide open screens, especially here in Florida, we've got so bad, small hive beetles are so bad. I think if you're just running a wide open screen for a bottom board, you're just inviting beetles to come into your beehive. So. For, that, for those reasons, I've gone back to solid bottoms. I did some experiments last year. I ran a, a solid bottom with some slots in it and a pan underneath it to try to catch beetles and, and whatnot. And it did work. I caught some beetles, but it's maintenance pulling that thing out and dumping the diatomaceous earth and dumping the mineral oil. And frankly, it's a pain in the butt. So I've gone to just a solid bottom and I'm gonna make some, some uh, modified entrances. I might try some tubes like Jason did. I might try a little ledge. So that's, that's the plan there. And then the second topic is ventilating your beehives. Especially here in Florida, people talk about, you know, putting some pennies or nickels under the lid to let air out so the bees can be cooler in the box. Well, you gotta be careful with that because 
being cool is relative, or being comfortable, I should say, is relative. For most human beings, 75 degrees is comfortable. Now, some people might find it a little bit cool, some might find it warm, but on the average, most people would be comfortable at 75 degrees. But a bee at 75 degrees is going to kill the bees, because your bees can't raise brood at the temperature. The temperature in the beehive to raise brood has got to be between 90 and 95. And you can hit 97, you're okay. If you get down to 89, and it stays at 89 for any length of time, for like five or six hours, brood start having problems. I mean, they've done tests on that. And in the opposite extreme, I know they got these devices out that, that pretty much cooks your bees to kill varroa mites. And I don't think there's enough testing really out there for, to really be conclusive on the data. I think you're cooking your brood. You're probably killing your mice, but I think you're cooking your brood because you're bringing the temperature up and you're sustaining the temperature for a significant amount of time. Uh, I can give you an example. I raise queens. Um, I don't raise a lot of the time. Usually it's like you know, six to ten at the most. I raise them in an incubator. I'll, I'll graft a week after graft, they go in the incubator. Typically two or three days after they go in the incubator, I start candling. I like to candle my queen cells on what would be day 14 because inevitably I get at least one early queen and I want to know for sure if I'm going to get an early queen so I can make arrangements to get a mating nuke out for a day 15 queen or a day 14 queen if I grafted an older larva. So about a month or so back I was in the garage in the morning and doing my things in the morning and I popped the incubator open and I candled all the cells and there was one I saw moving so I marked that one as a queen which is going to come out early. I stuck it all back together, went and got ready to go to work, I had to go back in the garage to get some stuff and a total of 30 minutes or less had passed from the time I'd been in the box so I went back in the garage. And I glanced at the incubator and I noticed that the temperature wasn't showing a temperature, it showed two horizontal lines. So I knew something was wrong, I could hear the fan running inside of it, so I knew the heater was on, something was wrong. So I opened the box up, kind of find out I had knocked the thermal probe off of the thermostat. And so it had been running heat from the time I'd been in there. So I plugged everything back in and it was reading 107 degrees. So it didn't hit 107 degrees sometime within that 30 minute time period. I don't know how long it sustained that. So I left the lid open, let it cool off, watched it so the temperature got down back below 95, put the lid back on, waited. None of those queens came out. I killed them all. So that short period of time on those queens which are sitting at day 14, all of them died. So I gotta believe that if you're hitting your beehive with these high temperatures and you've got cat brood fixing to come out, I got a feeling anything that's capped, you're killing it, or you're coming close to killing it. So you may be, you know, killing off your varroa mites, but you're probably killing off several thousand bees at the same time. So that's my feelings on the two things. I don't think you need to ventilate your beehive. Your bees are very capable of climate controlling the beehive. A bee is cold blooded. But a beehive, as a collective, is a super organism, and it's warm-blooded because it will thermoregulate. Now, we've been running, people have been keeping bees for thousands of years. Before Langstroth box, people kept them in skeps and they kept them in boxes, and they didn't have screen bottoms. Um, I've taken bees out of birdhouses and owl boxes where they've been so packed full of comb, there's no room left in the box, and the bees are thriving in these things in the hot sun and these are these are boxes that have been standing on posts in direct sunlight in florida and you can't get much hotter than that but we know that bees when they get hot some of them will vacate the box and workers will go out and bring drops of water in and sprinkle them around the beehive and evaporate the water to bring the temperature down so you, they can thermoregulate Another situation happened with me a year ago in the springtime, or actually it was uh, late winter, before, right before springtime. I think it was like late February, early March. Of course, we don't have a winter here in Florida. I had made some splits. I made three or four four-frame nuke splits, or five-frame nuke splits. I can't remember if it was four or five-frame. Anyway, made some splits. And then, uh, here. She gave me the wrong direction. Anyway, I made some splits, 
and found out that um, one of the splits just wasn't working. I mean, of the of the ones I made, a couple were doing pretty good, but one of them just wasn't growing at all. And so, couldn't figure out why. And they would have like one half of one frame of brood. Everything else is running brood on three or four frames. So, I went out to check the boxes one afternoon. I'm looking at the, the box that's thriving and just the brood is going. I was thinking about taking the brood frame over and sticking it in the box that's struggling. Maybe help them along the way. And then looking at the, the box that's struggling, I realized the lid is not sitting flat. As I look closer at it, I could see that the lid was warped. And one side of the lid had a gap, maybe an eighth of an inch, all the way down the whole side of the lid. And at the time, I was running screen bottoms. Or it had some, I think there was like, there's like three holes drilled in the bottom, like two inch round holes with screen covering. So essentially a screen bottom and a lid. So the problem I had was, it was cool. It was still, you know, early spring, late winter. The evenings were getting cool. The daytimes were nice. In Florida, daytimes in February is 80 degrees. But the nights were getting down into the 50s. And the problem was, because the lid wasn't flat, the air was coming through that thing and they couldn't keep heat. They could not maintain enough heat in that box to incubate more than half of one frame of brood. So changed the lid out, put a nice flat lid on there, came back a week later, she's laying eggs on three frames and they're making brood. So ventilating your beehive may not be a good idea. I think just let the bees take care of it themselves. They'll beer it out. They'll bring in water. They'll take care of it. Give them, if you're really worried about it, give them an extra box. But I wouldn't ventilate your beehives. That's all I got for today.